Hey, 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 welcome, welcome back, back to Clean, to Clean Cut, Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today, is tradition important to the faith? Why or why not? This is another question that goes back to one of my favorite topics, the nature of God. The Christian understanding of the nature of God is that God is the one who created the universe, not just stars and planets, but physical space and time themselves, which by itself tells us something. It tells us first that God has the infinite power needed to bridge the infinite distance separating nothing from something. Changing nothing into something requires infinite power. However, it also tells us that God is spaceless and timeless. We know this because space and time are created by God, and if God were in space and time, he wouldn't exist prior to them, and therefore he wouldn't be able to create them because you need to at least exist prior to something in order to create it. Now, there are a few objections to this view of God, so let me take a moment to address those before we continue on. First, some people will say that it's incoherent to say prior to time, since the first moment of time simply is the first moment, and there isn't any moment prior to it in time. My response to this is that there's more than one way to be prior to something. There can be a prior cause and effect in a temporal or time-based sense, and there can also be prior causes in a non-time-based or purely causal sense, like links in a chain. You can have prior links in the chain and later links going up or down the chain respectively but each link causes all the links below it to not fall to the ground. God is prior to time in a causal sense, not a time-based sense, and he needs to be causally prior to time in order to create it. It's also been proposed by some Christian thinkers and philosophers that God might have been timeless without the universe, but might enter into time when the universe begins. Therefore, he might not be timeless anymore. However, I don't think this is possible. Let me explain. Let's say that this line represents time, and this symbol represents God. See? Here's God, and he's totally outside of the timeline, which would be my view. He can interact with the timeline, but he's not contained in it. Now, the idea that God can enter into time could happen in one of two ways. Either God enters fully into time, or only a part of him does. If God enters fully into time, we have two stages of God, one in which he's out here, being timeless, and another in which he's in here, being in the timeline. The problem is this. How does this change come about within God? Changes only take place in time. That's the primary purpose that we use time measurements for, to measure change from one state to another state. Without time, there can't be any change. Every change takes time. This is as obvious as anything about time could ever be. Therefore, we can't say that God changes to enter into time, because the very claim that he changes requires him to already be in time. Some have suggested that this could be resolved by proposing a time beyond time, or meta-time, in which God exists. This way, he could undergo changes, moving into time and back out again if he wanted to. However, as long as meta-time is made of a series of individual moments or events, like our own time, that time also has to have a beginning, so you can't have an actually infinite number of past events or moments. So God would also have a beginning in this meta-time sense, and wouldn't be a sufficient first cause for everything else. So we're back to the same problem with this meta-time that we have with plain old ordinary time over here. Namely, he can't be both the first cause and also capable of change. So I don't think God can enter fully into time in any way that makes logical sense. What about partially? Can only one part of God enter into time? Well, putting aside the question of whether God even has parts, there are only a couple of ways that God could enter partially into time. The first would be if the part of him that enters into time was at one point timeless. This would require that that part of God changed, and we're back to the same problems we had with God entering fully into time. If that part of God that entered into time was not timeless, but instead only existed within time itself, however, well, that's quite a claim. It seems to assume that there is a part of God which doesn't transcend time, wasn't present in the timeless state beyond time, and therefore wasn't present until the universe was created, 
so it seems to be lacking in quite a number of the qualities that God has. More importantly, because it only begins at the first moment of time, it would seem to be a created thing, which is part of the universe, like a star or a nebula. I'm not saying God couldn't cause an incredibly powerful, time-based, created being to come into existence at the same time as the universe, which does what he wants it to do, but if it doesn't share his eternal nature, it wouldn't be part of God. It would just be another created thing. More powerful, perhaps, or wiser, or more capable in certain ways, but still, just another creation. The most that I think you could say is that God, being timeless, also gains another nature which is in time. But even then, the divine nature of God would still be timeless, and guess what? That's the traditional understanding of who Jesus himself was. Jesus was in time in his human nature, but he was also timeless in his divine nature, as the second person of the Holy Trinity. So the idea of God in his divine nature entering partly into time doesn't work very well either. A timeless being can't become a temporal one. Now, why go over all this stuff about God and time in the first place? Well, it's related to an important point. The divine nature of God is not in time, and therefore does not change. And it is from the divinity of God that our moral obligations come. Teachings on morality and teachings of the faith, indeed all divine truths, reside here, outside of time, and therefore can never ever change. So, if these are truths which can never change, that means that what was true about God and his moral commands five years ago, or ten, or fifty, or five hundred, or more, is still true today, and will be true in another five hundred, or thousand, or million years. How does all of this relate to the topic of tradition? It means that if the church knew any truths about God that were related to his timeless nature, such as, it's not moral to murder someone, then those truths have never, and will never change. No innovation or creativity is necessary in order to know the truth about these things. You don't need to be clever or inventive. What was true about God then is true about God now, and those truths can be passed on by simply repeating them, and in some cases, repeating the reasons why we know they're true, to new generations. Could there be a better definition of tradition? So, in closing, we know that tradition is very important to the faith, because without tradition, or something like it, you lose track of all the truths that are unchanging and timeless. In short, all truths about God. Next, will there be games in heaven? That's, That's all for, for now, now, so, so keep, keep asking, asking questions, questions, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.